Hello everyone! For today, we'll be learning about the basic of coffee preparation and of course, we'll be introducing our espresso machine, its parts, and its features. To start with our first part, I'll be showing you our cup warmer. This is where we place our cups to keep it warm and at the same time, it helps to retain the proper temperature of our espresso by the time it is being dispensed in our espresso machine. Okay, for the next part, we'll be showing you our steam wand. Okay, this is what we use in preparing our frothed milk. In terms of preparing cappuccino, latte, or any espresso-based beverages that needs milk, okay, or its foam. So this is our steam wand. This is our steam valve. So the next part that I'm going to show you is our hot water valve and hot water spout. Okay. As you can see here, by the time I open the valve, okay, it releases hot water or pressurized hot water in order for us to prepare teas or even cafe americano for our espresso based beverages. Of course, we have to be careful in opening this one. Okay. So make sure that before you open our valve, you have to double check okay, the pressure coming out of the spout. To, to avoid, of course, unwanted accidents. We have our pressure gauges. As you can see here, for our espresso machine, it is very important to have the proper pressure in terms of preparing espresso, okay? So the ideal pressure that we have is at least nine atmospheric bar pressure. That is very important to maintain in order for you to create a perfect shot of espresso. So it's located in this area. So the next part that we're going to show you is our portafilter. filter. This is where we place our ground coffee in preparing our shot of espresso. As you can see here, we have a single spout, meaning this is being used in single serving for any espresso-based beverages. The next part that I'm going to show you is our group head. This is where we place our portafilter. filter. By the time we place the ground coffee inside our portafilter, filter, group head, just like this, in order for us to extract our espresso. Okay, we have to make sure that the placement of our porta filter is nice and tight in order for us to prevent spillages. If it's too loose, we'll create spillages on the sides of our porta filter. But if it's too tight, we'll be creating a bitter flavor for our espresso. So we have to be careful okay, in terms of uh, placing it properly in our uh, group head. For the next part of our espresso machine, I'll be showing you our operational button. The first button is half shot button. The second one we have the full shot or one shot button. For the third button we have the double half shot. Okay, and for the fourth button we have the double single shot button. And of course we have the free flowing button. As for the last part, okay, we'll be showing you of course the drip tray. This is where we place our cups in order for us to prepare our espresso, okay? And of course, you can place several cups all at the same time. Whether you're making cafe americano, cappuccino, or latte, since you're making espresso, you can put at least four cups simultaneously. So the next equipment that we're going to feature you is our coffee grinder, okay? This is where we place our coffee beans in order for us to get the right amount of uh, ground espresso for our porta filter so we can prepare our shot of espresso or cafe americano or any espresso based beverages. So the next tool that I'm going to show you is our tamper. This is what we use in pressing the coffee grounds inside our porta filter in order for us to create a compact coffee ground that we can use in preparing our espresso. So other important tools that we need also in preparing our espresso is, of course, our knock box. This is where we place the used coffee grounds, okay, that we use after making espresso or any espresso-based beverages. All we need to do is to place our porta filter on our knock box like this. So this is how we use our knock box. So for today, we'll be preparing a shot of espresso. For us to begin, we need, of course, coffee grind okay and at the same time we'll be using our porta filter okay this one 
and we will be dispensing at least 7.5 grams of ground coffee. Okay. So we have to make sure that the coffee grounds are being placed evenly to the sides of our porta filter in order for us to tamp it evenly. So after tamping our ground coffee in our porta filter, we will place this inside our group head. Okay, so we have to make this one secure. Like what I mentioned before, not too tight but not too loose. Okay. Then for us to be able to extract our espresso, we'll be needing our demitas or demitas cup. Okay. This is what we use in serving our espresso. And I'll be pushing the single shot button. And we'll be having our extracted espresso in just a few moments. For today, we'll be making cafe latte. To start with, of course, we need to have our ground coffee. And we have also our chilled milk in order for us to create a frothed foam for our cafe latte. Okay, we have to make sure that uh, we're using our frothing pitcher. Okay, it must be chilled as well for us to create a proper foam. And we have to make sure also that we need to have the right amount of milk for our frothed milk so we don't have to have any wastages after. I'm going to remove my porta filter, get my coffee grounds. We have to make sure that this one is well even on the side of our porta filter. Okay. Once we're done with leveling, we get our tamper and press this one. We have to make sure to get rid of unwanted coffee grounds on the side so we don't have any dirt on our group head. So get our cafe latte cup and press the button. So by the time we have our espresso, we can prepare our frothed milk. We have to double check our steam one first. To start with, okay, you need to purge our steam one in order for you to get rid of any unwanted water inside it. Okay, just for about 3 to 5 seconds, that will do. So then right after that, you can set it in an angle where you're comfortable with. And make sure that you have to have a cold milk. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is to place this inside our frothing pitcher. Okay? One thing that you need to know is you don't need to lean it on the side of the frothing pitcher. Okay? And of course, not too deep. You have to place your steaming wand just off the center of your frothing pitcher and just above the surface of the milk. Okay. By the time we start our frothing, you have to make sure that you open your steam valve all the way so you can create a vortex. By doing so, okay, we're creating a vortex to aerate the milk and you have to make sure that you need to have a right temperature not reaching 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit otherwise you'll get a burnt milk so this is the right sound for your milk by the time it's ready in order for you to create the finer bubbles like what I mentioned earlier you need to have a cold milk in order for you to create a microphone okay but if you have bigger bubbles inside your frothing pitcher all you need to do is to tap it sideways just to get rid of the bigger bubbles and of course, for you to have a right consistency of a frothed milk, all you need to do is to swirl your frothing pitcher in order for you to mix the foam and milk all together. By the time it's get, uh, it gets shinier, you have a proper frothed milk okay, for you to use for latte or cappuccino. So this is our cafe latte. So right now, we're going to prepare our cappuccino. To start with, of course, we'll be having our ground coffee and our cold milk. So the difference between cappuccino and latte, for cappuccino, you have to have at least more foam and less milk. Okay? As opposed to latte, latte has more milk and less foam. For cappuccino, basic characteristic of this one is a little bit stronger compared to latte because it has fewer milk. So to start with, of course, we'll be having our chilled milk. So again, you have to remember that you need to use chilled milk. And we need to prepare our espresso. 
So we need to get our party filter. Level them properly. And of course, we'll be using our tamper in order for us to press our coffee grounds inside our porta filter. So clear any unwanted coffee ground and place it in our group head. Again, make sure that this is nice and tight. And our cup. And again, since we're using single serve coffee or cappuccino, you have a proper frothed milk okay, for you to use for latte or cappuccino. So this is our cappuccino. Okay, for today, we'll be making ice caramel latte. So this time, for our espresso-based beverage, we'll be doing a procedure called shaken. So with the use of our three-piece cocktail shaker. And of course, our ingredients are a shot of espresso, cold milk, and of course, we have our caramel syrup. Okay, to start with, of course, we'll be placing our ice in our cocktail shaker. Okay. And place our shot of espresso inside our shaker. And two jiggers or two ounces of milk. For our sweetener, of course, we'll be using our caramel syrup. So we'll measure this one half ounce. So like what I mentioned, we'll be using a shaken procedure. So we have to make sure that this one is well shaken in order for us to incorporate all the flavors. Cover the lid and we'll be shaking this one. Okay. And of course, for our glassware, we'll be using our highball glass. And optional, if you want to have a little bit of design, you can place this one with a caramel syrup inside the glass just before placing ice. Pour our ice caramel latte. Okay, as you can see, there are foams building up on top of our drink. Optional, if you want to place this one with whipped cream to make it more creamier or leave it as it is. And of course, do not forget to use our straw. Okay, and there you have it. So you have your ice caramel latte. Okay. So again, so there you have it. So we have at least three espresso-based beverages made for you. And I do hope you learned a lot from this one. And we do hope to see you in our training room soon. Thank you.